the DOJ's recommendations to monitor so closely, so stringently, that we have nothing in front of us except success. Because there's no room for abuse at all, period, the end, for any officer and any resident. So my point to this community is let's give that opportunity, let's let those uh, adverse, ad, what are the, uh -huh. Let's give those opportunities that the DOJ offered us. Let's give those recommendations an opportunity. That's what I'm looking for. So ladies and gentlemen, let's work together. Let the anger be hushed.
But liking people has nothing to do with business. Pay attention to page 11 of the budget and figure out why in a $20 million budget, $11 million is for the administration. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Ask me why 95% of their pensions are paid in. So when they retire, because it doesn't matter what I think, they're walking away. God's doing his job. And I'm glad that I don't let God use me. I, I mean, I don't let, I don't use God, I let God use me. And that's directed at a candidate. But I'm saying, the thing about it is, is that you need to pay attention why 95% of that pension is paid in. So when they walk away, where's the money going to go? And as citizens of this community, bad investment bankers, when they walk away and take all the money, we're left with nothing. And don't confuse my anger with my passion. Look at me, I'm talking with the dirty rings. You know I'm right, that's why you're mad. She's mad at all. And when they walk away, and when they get tired and they walk away, all the money's going with them. Yeah, excuse me. Time for the speaker to speak. Thank you, ma'am. Hi, my name is Danielle Morrison. Uh, I don't know what's going on. This side of the person who has wood stuff, it's a whole different story. With these police officers, I've been paying. I've been standing first since I was 16 years old. And on August 9th, 2014, I got treated like I was an animal. Yeah. Like I wasn't a, a taxpayer at all. And they do. what I got to say is, how can you have somebody policing people that they don't understand? These police, these police officers, they need psyche valves. Because half of them ain't right. <laughs>
I think there's a lot of people. I've only got two minutes Listen to everything that's been going on this evening, 
and it's real enlightening. But the one thing that hurts me more than anything is the lack of respect that we don't have for each other. I'm going to tell you, if my mom was up in here right now, and any of our parents were here, they'd be really disappointed. Because I've listened to disrespect, I've listened to slanderous, I've listened to terrible things said about people that are just trying to get their point across. This is America. We have the right to voice how we feel. We're not in Russia. And if you were over in Iran, and you talked about the issues like this, you'd be done. That's one good thing about being having your rights. I just think things will be better if we start respecting each other. Sure, we've been disrespected by the police force. But you know, I was wrong one time. I parked backwards on the street, and I got a $75 ticket. But I was wrong. And that's the price you pay in the world today for being wrong is an expensive price. This is not 1968. This is, two, this is 2015. Sure, it was expensive, but I was wrong. And if we start being accountable and being dependable, that equals trustworthiness. And I feel we have a long ways to go. We can talk about getting rid of the mayor, getting rid of the police chief, but I feel we as citizens have to learn how to respect each other to be able to come together. I'm from Dayton, Ohio, and I've seen the riots. I've seen them tear people down. I've seen them replace the police force, and it didn't do a bit of good. <coughs> we didn't have respect for each other. That's all I ask. Be respectful and be courteous. Thanks for recording. Thank you. Yes, my name is Deborah Jones. I did not learn anything in purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I protested every day, seven days a week. <laughs> to the council, I did not learn anything. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing the brother said about cleaning the wound, need to get clean. Because it's getting infected. And infection is going into the streets. And I mean, it's going in their bad. Almost like an Ebola. You need to clean this house up. Thank you. Hello, my name is Marissa Alexander. <laughs> Mayor. The Honorable James Noel III. Resigned from the position of mayor. We the citizens of Ferguson, Missouri respectfully request that you resign from the position of mayor of our city before the end of March 13, 2015. We cannot describe how disgusted we are with you. We now ask that you vacate the office. We call on you to do the only honorable thing at this time. Resign immediately and per our city charter request that the council president and city council schedule a special election to fill the office of mayor. Sincerely, ground level support. Hi, I'm Jerry Jasper, and I live on Clark. And um, I agree with Adrian about the. Um, and up about the respect and lack, lack of respect. I protested. I still do. I see different protests. And we don't have to agree about everything, but we have to talk and respect each other. It does come down to that. And if we don't, like people said, the whole world is watching. Whether you agree with me or not, we still can talk to each other. You still have to invite me over for a barbecue or invite me to your kids' christening. Just, we still are friends and residents. And facts are facts. If, I know, if the Department of Justice 
could have charged Darren Wilson, oh, they yeah. would have. So I'm saying it. And nobody's perfect. But you know what? Stupidity is not a respecter of persons. I said it before. No matter what color you are, there are people that act stupid of every color. And you know what? If I don't ask God for help in the morning, I can act pretty stupid too. But um, I'm just telling you. So before you throw a rock, look in the mirror. You're looking at the problem. Sometimes it's us. How we respond to each other. We have to stop. I'm sorry I turned around and said, be quiet. I'm a retired teacher. When people, like Adrian said, other people said, when people are talking, you should be listening. All I'm saying is, I love Ferguson. I've been here a long time. I plan on staying. I'm not saying who should come or go. I'm saying open up your eyes and open up your heart. And people that are wrong, admit it. People that are right, admit it. Anything hidden is going to be revealed. You saw some things revealed, but some people have to accept. You saw some other things revealed. Hands up, don't shoot was a lie, apparently. Because that's what the Department of Justice said. Not me. I wasn't there. I read it in the report. So I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We have to read The Department of Justice says, well, from the, so read the report. I'm just saying, respect each other and read the report about why he wasn't charged. If he could have been charged, he would have been charged. He's not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Again, look at me. I'm certainly not perfect. Look at me. I sort of like eating during all this riot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you the fact. I've been watching the live stream. I had to go too far. I opened my door. I was close to the police station. But I'm saying, I was eating my nachos and cheese and thinking, oh. <laughs> you know what? We all have our stuff. So everybody's food and smell. So flip <laughs> Last speaker. You can't hardly see her. She's down there. <laughs> Can you? Come on. Sorry, Mayor. Got it. Can you hear me? Is it off? So he can see her. There you go. Oh, okay. It's the truth. Well, do I look like a threat? I mean, I'm on page 28 of the Ferguson report from the DOJ, who said that the police's escalation that night appeared unnecessary. That's it was. That's exhibit B when I have court on the 19th. Thank you. So don't forget her. Oh, Heather DeMayan, uh, St. Charles, Missouri. Thank you. Yay. Don't forget her. Thank you. Is there anyone waiting outside who was intending to address the council this evening? There was a few people outside.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Nice to meet you in your respective places. My name is Rhonda McKenzie. I've been a nurse for 20 years. I do not live in Ferguson. I live in Florence, Missouri. And I have seen the changes. I believe and truly believe that we are all humans. Um, and we need to look at each other and look at ourselves and look at how we can change this community. Not only Ferguson, but Florence and other communities. These young people are growing up. We are getting older. And, and they're watching us. They're watching everything that we do. You're from we have these young oh, people that right now, yeah. some of them did the burning and things like that because they're angry. They have no other recourse. The are there the any yeah. doing services in Ferguson yeah. that the students are so sorry that the young people yeah, can yeah, do? Yeah, that's a good story. Yeah. Are there any community services? Are there any educational uh, Let me mute this before I give you my phone number. I am not from Ferguson. I've never lived in Ferguson, but I support <coughs> my people, okay? And I support people as a human. As we all are human, and we have feelings, and we have to live together. It, it's, it's imperative, and the world is watching everything you guys do, and they're going to talk about it, and it's going to be negative. So something positive has to come out of this. Yes, it does. Either we get together as a human race of people and make this work. We can't change what has happened. We can't bring back this young man. But there's a whole lot of Mike Browns out there. I have a 15-year-old son, and I give him the talk every time he leaves. And I'm sad. I'm sad to this point that we as human beings, as a nurse for 20 years, I've taken care of people of all races. I've been a dialysis nurse for numerous of years, of all races, all creed, all color. But when you're sick and you're on your dying bed, you don't care what color that person is. Even our police force, they don't care. They just need the help. So why can't we help each other? Why can't we come together as a community, as communities, if you will? That's all I have to say. Rose. I'm not a resident of Ferguson, and I was hoping one of them had brought this up, but they haven't. Tonight's meeting started with the news that John Shaw is no longer going to have a job at 12.01 tonight. My question to you is, what's going to happen after that? Are you going to wait until after the election to replace John Shaw, or are you going to do it with the same old people? Are you going to do it in the same old way? How are things going to be different starting tomorrow? What is Ferguson going to do to make this better? That decision is going to be tantamount to how Ferguson approaches this problem and every small decision that comes afterward. And it needs to be open to the public, and it needs to be done with public input, and it needs to have accountability, because your city doesn't have that. Today is the day to change. You've got rid of the old problem, now don't create the next one.
Hey, Mike. Hey, yeah, them getting their feelings all up there. <laughs> I don't know, they, the, the city manager's gone at midnight, so... <laughs> oh, we know, we know. <laughs> Believe me, we know. All the mother I need to get their ass off. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for what you're doing. Oh. Appreciate it. Thank you. What's up with you? Oh. I'm tired. <laughs> Finally got all my batteries recharged, though. God, I missed live streaming. I was recording all weekend. Hey, hey. <laughs> I couldn't stay at home on this one. I've been out of action for too long. I had to get back out here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream for right now. Might be back up in a little while. Uh, we'll see. Or, um, I'm trying to figure out if I should kill the stream right now or what's gonna, if I should keep an eye on things. or. Officer friendly. <laughs> Look of the uh, little group of white congratulatory. Yeah, but I saw Fletcher <laughs> over there. I saw that. <laughs> They're patting each other, literally on the back. Yeah, I know. It's not even metaphoric. It's you know that they, they Yeah, they Those conveniently things. ignore the fact that Holder said the the, st the legal standard for civil rights, federal civil rights violations, needs to be lowered. <laughs> and and that Darren Wilson did tell the FBI that he wasn't a threat. You know, why would you tell them that in your interview and then change your story? <laughs> so many questions. So many questions. You know, and his supervisor, his, his supervisor was one of the ones that sent one of those racist emails. It was a guy he called, was the first one on the scene, allowed him to check his own gun. <laughs> oh, I know. Right? Except case of case. Like, <laughs> Don't bother the case of case. Huh? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm going to go. I think people are just going to visit right now. I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream. Uh, maybe back up later. We'll see. Bye-bye.